It's a great view of Swindon from up here in Old Town. I'm Paul Lancaster and for many years I produced Swindon's local channel on Swindon Cable. One of our popular features was local history and looking back in time, comparing pictures of the past with those of today in a series we called Swindon Through the Years. Well in this, Swindon's 175th anniversary year, we thought it would be appropriate to do more of the same. This time we're turning back the clock 31 years to 1985. The clips were recorded as part of Swindon Cable's news programme, Focus on Swindon. It reported on news and events all over town. In this programme, we'll be remembering Bluebird Toys and the Big Yellow Teapot. We'll be off to Lydiard House to see just how little things have changed. And we'll be taking a look at Swindon's premier DIY store at Sanford's. So enjoy a look back at Swindon through the years, the changing face of Swindon. And remember at the end, please do like, comment or share. I'd like to hear what you think. Let's turn the clock back now in Swindon through the years. Delving into the Swindon Cable Archive, we're turning back the clock to 1985 and discovering more forgotten sites of a changing town in Swindon through the years. Well, let's start our journey back in time with a trip to the Cheney Manor Industrial Estate. This was once one of the main industrial areas, boasting a wealth of well-known companies. Let's travel back to 1985 and the factory and offices of Bluebird Toys. Bluebird was in the news at the time for producing one of the most popular toys of the 1980s. Yes, it's the big yellow teapot. The concept merged the idea of young girls playing with dolls and tea sets into one toy. It was released in 1981 and proved a huge hit for the Swindon-based company. The plastic yellow teapot opened up to reveal a playhouse inside with a family of plastic figures. These rare images show workers hard at work at the Cheney Manufactory. Bluebird Toys went on to produce the Big Red Fun Bus and the Polly Pocket range of toys. Our view from the outside in 1985 shows the offices with the factory behind. The Mayor of Thamesdown's chauffeur-driven Daimler is in the car park as the cameras were there for a special event to mark the success of the company. Today, 31 years later, the 1960s style building still stands. It's now home to the Swindon Hindu Temple, providing a cultural centre in a block that was disused for some time. Bluebird outgrew their premises in Cheney Manor and moved to the Granwell Estate before they were taken over by the US toy giant Mattel in 1998. The toys were merged into its own range and they closed the Swindon operation. I suspect very few people drive by the very ordinary looking industrial building today, knowing what delight and joy this place helped bring to thousands of children around the world. The original Swindon home of the Big Yellow Teapot. And as we mentioned the Mayor, this is the man himself, Councillor Harry Garrett, wearing his chain of office of Bluebird Toys in 1985. Well now to West Swindon. Here's our modern view of the Freshbrook Community Centre. The single storey building has been at the centre of the community since it opened back in 1985. Tootill and Freshbrook were amongst the first areas built as Swindon spread into the western part of the town. We turn back the clock 31 years for our mid-1980s view of the Freshbrook Community Centre almost complete after construction. Our view shows the centre in the final phase of being built not long before opening. Today the building still stands, still providing that important community facility. It shows a certain style used by the council at the time in many of the buildings for community use. Our next 1985 view is included to show, thankfully, that some views change very little with the passing of time. Of course, this is the front exterior of Lydiard House, a Grade 1 listed house that for 500 years was home to the St John family. 
Our 1985 view shows that little has changed. In fact, the house is probably in much better condition now than it was then. Swindon Corporation bought the house in 1943, and after many years of restoration, the Grand House is open to visitors throughout the year. When the railway works opened in the town, it was Lord Bolingbroke who lived at Lydiard that complained about the sound of the railway hooter disturbing his peace and quiet. The park seen some great improvements, and the lake that had long since gone back in 1985 is now back to its former glory. Lydiard remains a major attraction for local people and a splendid piece of Swindon's history. Back in 1890 in Swindon, there was a boom in school building. This is our 1985 view of Clarence Street School on the corner of Clarence and Euclid Streets. Today it's no longer used as a school, it's part of a civic campus, housing the council's social services departments and used as offices. The school was built at a cost of £12,091 back in 1897, accommodating 840 boys and girls and 320 infants. Today the busy traffic flows past and the school bell no longer rings at the start of lessons, but the building is listed and should stand for many years to come. Notice too our 1985 view and a tree to the right of the picture, no longer there in our modern view. Or now to what was once a much busier junction in Gorse Hill where Cricklade Road crosses Chapel Street. In 1985 this was the Gateway Supermarket. Watch carefully as we roll back time and see today's co-op disappear. The Gateway brand is another name that's disappeared from the high street. Their small to medium sized stores were later to become Summerfield before being taken over in 2009 by the cooperative group. The store in Gorse Hill reflects these changes today as we move forward to 2016. The store is still busy and still serving local shoppers with the co-op branding now covering the store. The local scene has changed though. The road's been remodelled since 1985. The extension of Great Western Way now means much of the traffic that once travelled along Cricklade Road has been diverted along a new road further to the east. Today the street furniture has changed and the pavement widened, all in the name of progress. Our next view from 1985 is at a busy interchange where the A420 passes under the A419. It's an awful day weather-wise back in 1985, but our view shows a very different area to that of today. The Crest Hotel was to the right of the picture and the land we're looking across at was yet to be developed. As you'll see from our view 31 years later, the land was to house the large Toys R Us store and the Sainsbury's Stratton supermarket. The traffic at this junction has continued to increase and today a footbridge has been built to help pedestrians and cyclists avoid mixing with the heavy lorries. The Crest went on to become the Madison Hotel but was closed and sold to a developer back in 2014. However, a fire in 2016 destroyed the building and it's now being demolished. Back in 1985 Swindon, this was just one of a couple of major DIY stores. For many people, Sanford's on the roundabout of Mannington provided their first experience of a DIY superstore with everything under one roof for the house and garden. Moving forward 31 years and there have been many changes. Today the site of the old Sanford store is where Next Home and M&S Food operate from. The name Sanford's disappeared when it became part of Texas Home Care. Swindon then boasted two stores with the other at Greenbridge. 
Texas was later acquired by Sainsbury's home base and the stores in Swindon changed their names. However, it wasn't to last, as home base already had many stores across the country and closure was on the cards. In 2010, the original buildings on the site were partly demolished and redeveloped to make way for new outlets as major brands moved in in 2012. Today, there's more traffic than ever visiting the various stores. There's certainly been a great deal of change since our 1985 views. Discovering forgotten sites in a changing town, delving into the Swindon Cable Archive for another look at Swindon through the years. Music